Hi guys and welcome to Fandom Newbie. My name is Shruti and today I'm doing my Q&A video for 2021. So last week I put up this post on my community tab as well as on my Instagram stories and I asked you guys to send in your questions. So today I'll be answering a few of them. Let's start. <laughs> so question number one, which actually a lot of you asked me was who is my favorite Harry Potter character? Now, when I was younger, so like when I was in school and I was reading the books, my favorite character was Luna Lovegood. I absolutely adored her because I just loved how she was not afraid to be her true self. Like she was just who she was and she wasn't afraid of what people thought of her. And she was just her true, weird, wonderful self. And I was really inspired by that. So I loved uh, Luna Lovegood. But as an adult, uh, when I read the Harry Potter books, I think my favorite character would have to be Lupin. I really liked Remus Lupin in book three. I thought he he was an amazing father figure to Harry and someone that Harry really deserved to have in his life. Uh, I know he, like in book seven, he he does and says some weird things, uh, but book three Lupin was just absolutely amazing and I loved his character. The next question comes from Vaibhavi Gupta. She says, I was really thrilled to read A Man Called O, but now while reading it, I have to push myself to complete or take few days off and on uh, and again start reading. What do you do in such a situation when you want to finish the book but find it a little boring? My thing is that if I have to force myself to read a book that I'm not enjoying, I generally get myself into a reading slump because like I'm conditioned in a way where I cannot read multiple books at the same time. I am the person who reads one book at a time. So that's why for me the easier thing to do is just to leave it and see what I want to do with it like later on probably maybe come back to it in the future or never read it but yeah I do generally leave it sometimes however if it's not really the book that is boring but I'm just in a very very like you know reading slumpy kind of mood then I try to listen to that book on audiobook because listening to the book for me seems a little bit more passive as compared to like actively reading it so it helps me get through the book and I end up actually enjoying the book a lot more when I'm listening to it on audiobook. The next question comes from Avantika. She says, Hey, I literally want to ask you, how did you get the idea or inspiration of keeping your channel name as Fandom Newbie? Because I love the name of your channel. Aw, firstly, thank you for liking the name of my channel. But the story behind my channel name is very random. <laughs> So when I first joined YouTube uh, and I selected the name Fandom Newbie, I did really select it with the purpose of wanting to make YouTube videos. So at that point in time, I think it was like 2009 or 2010, I can't remember. But basically during that time, there was a huge Harry Potter fan community on YouTube and there were a lot of like Harry Potter content creators. So... Uh, it was back in like 2008 or 2009 that I had actually discovered this entire Harry Potter fandom that existed on YouTube. So I considered myself a newbie to that fandom. <laughs> so when I joined YouTube, I literally joined with the sole purpose of wanting to comment on these uh, YouTube videos and like, you know, to interact with these content creators who are making Harry Potter videos. So I named myself Fandom Newbie because I was new to the Harry Potter fandom on YouTube. <laughs> that is why I named myself this channel. And I don't know why, like when I actually started making videos on YouTube, I don't know why I never changed it. I guess I was just lazy. So I just never changed it. And I just kept it Fandom Newbie and now I'm, I'm stuck with it. <laughs> So yeah, it's a very very random story. I didn't think about like a name when I was keeping it. Uh, it was just something that I did in the spur of the moment when I wanted to comment on Harry Potter fan videos. <laughs> the next question comes from Nidhi Matthew. She says, Hi Shruti, hope you're doing well. Hi Nidhi, I am. I'm doing great. And your question is, what are your resolutions for 2021? Also, are you on Goodreads? Uh, okay, to answer your second question, yes, I am on Goodreads. I will leave the link down in the description for my Goodreads account. I know a lot of you have been asking me for my Goodreads account, so I will leave it down in the description so you guys can follow me on there. 
and to answer your first question about my resolutions for 2021 i think like 2020 was a very kind of reflective year for me uh just in terms of like what i want to do with my career as well as like personally where i want to be in life um just like during the lockdown and because of everything that happened and all the disruption that happened because of 2020 it really gave me a chance to sit down and think about my future goals and what i really want to do so uh, my two main goals at least professionally for 2021 the first one is to shift from being a full-time nine to five employee to a self-sustained entrepreneur uh, the wheels for that have already started turning and I can actually see something happening very soon for me where um, I will be able to kind of hopefully sustain myself as a full-time entrepreneur. And the second goal that I have is to definitely expand the content that I make on YouTube. Uh, there are so many different like types of videos that I want to make. There are so many different topics that I want to talk about. So um, I will definitely be expanding the kind of content that I make on this platform and I will let you guys know very soon um, what you can expect and also where you can watch that content. So yeah, those are my two kind of big goals or resolutions for 2021. The next question comes from Education Hub. I love your videos, especially the relaxing vlogs. Thank you. Um, apart from reading, what else do you love to do? One of the things that I really, really love to do is dancing. I, it's like one of my biggest stress busters. So when I'm feeling very stressed or overwhelmed, I really love to just like put on some music, especially Bollywood music. And I just love to dance around in my house, in my room. I, I just absolutely love it. And the second thing that I really like to do is I love like i love consuming content um in like the sense that so my job right now is that i'm a video producer so i really love watching and consuming like movies tv shows from the point of view of like analyzing how they might have brought this kind of piece of content to life if that makes sense like i'm a huge geek for like understanding the behind the scenes of movies, understanding how like, you know, a director's like, what a director's creative process is and how he would like, you know, bring his vision to life. I love doing that. I love analyzing movies. I love watching like TV shows and analyzing them. I think these two things are my favorite things to do apart from reading books. The next question comes from Kanak. Uh, the question is, a book that you hated but everyone loved and a book you loved but everyone hated. Okay, so for the first one, a book that I hated but everyone loved, I think it would have to be The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I really wasn't like a, a big fan of that book. Like, I really did not like it. I didn't like Paolo Coelho's writing style, nor did I really enjoy the story that much. I've done an entire reading vlog of me reading The Alchemist. I'll link it up here if you guys want to check it out. But yeah, I think that would be that, like a book that I hated but everyone loved. A book that you loved but everyone hated. I think one of the most polarizing books that I have read like recently because a lot of people like commented that on my video was The Palace of Illusions. A lot of people seem to just absolutely hate that book um, because of like I guess some of the changes that Chitra Banerjee did with the Mahabharat. So I think that one probably is the most polarizing book that I've read of late. But otherwise, I can't really think of a book that I loved, but that nobody else seemed to like. I think I have very like generic taste in books. The next question is from Tim Basu. Um, he writes, have you ever been depressed in life? How did you get out of the worst time of your life? Um, okay, I have never been depressed in my life, but I do have anxiety. And there was a time in my life where my anxiety was absolutely crippling where um i just like i couldn't function i couldn't get out of bed i couldn't like you know just do daily tasks because the anxiety was just overwhelming and too much for me to deal with and during that time like which i consider to be probably the worst time that i have faced in my life i did go for therapy um seeking out professional help for me was one of the best things that i did um, because it just it gave me so much more perspective into like what I was going through what I was feeling that 
I was just not getting while when I was talking to like friends and family. I think the two things about therapy that were really good for me is that the first one is that therapy, like your therapist, um, is a professional. So she comes from an extremely non-judgmental point of view. So whenever you're going through something, like you know, when you're going through possibly like a really bad phase in your life i feel when you seek out like you know help from your friends or your family members like it's very hard for them to not be judgmental because i feel like it just naturally comes to them like oh you know what like other people are facing much harsher things that you're facing right now so you should just like you know you should just be happy or even things like just snap out of it i mean uh what you're going through is not such a big deal or like I don't know things like this that they that they say to you where like you know I, I feel like they think that they're doing a good thing by telling you that you know there are bigger problems in the world and what you're facing is actually quite small so you shouldn't be feeling this way I feel a lot of people say that when you reach out to them and that really I feel like harms the person more than actually helping them so when your therapist comes from a very non-judgmental point of view i feel like i feel like that is something that really really helped me like this is going to get deep i didn't expect this q a to be so deep but like the thing that really helped me when i went for therapy was my therapist just telling me that my feelings are valid like just just my therapist is like looking into my eyes and telling me that what i'm feeling is valid what i'm feeling is like is is normal and it's not that i'm overreacting or i'm acting crazy or i'm being dramatic like just looking at me straight and telling me like shruti what you're feeling is valid and what you're feeling is what we call a crisis situation like her just telling me that was enough for me like was enough for me to have this huge burden off my shoulders where like everyone else was just making me feel like I was being over dramatic that I just had to be happy that I just had to snap out of it when actually like I was feeling like absolute shit so just having that non-judgmental point of view really really helped me and the second thing was that the the therapist like basically talks to you in a very very unbiased way so just listening just like basically talking to you without any baggage like they don't know you they don't know your parents they don't know your your husband wife whoever like they're just talking to you as you and based on the information that you give them so having that unbiased point of view also really helps so yeah for me therapy really really helped and i feel like if you are going through a um, a really hard time in your life uh, seeking out professional help can can really really help Whew, okay that got very deep very fast but um i'll just take one more question which is uh from arpita pawar they ask what is the book which made you cry the most um there are a lot of books that made me cry um, I cried a lot while reading A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalil Hosseini. Oh my god, I was a total emotional mess. Um, I cried a lot during Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I was also an emotional mess while reading that one. Um, I cried a lot while reading The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. <sighs> that one just like really hits me in the feels always. And The Fault in Our Stars, another book that I weeped through yeah i think there are definitely more but these four would probably top the list <laughs> so yeah that was my video for today i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below letting me know if you want me to make more q a videos like this uh and also maybe let me know what are your like 2021 resolutions and goals for the year and of course do subscribe to my channel for more book related videos i'll see you guys next time bye